Today is all about you. This is your day to celebrate your achievements for all those essays you've written, those long nights you've put in. You've managed to get through it all and you're celebrating by being here today and congratulations to you all. Now when one thinks about it, days that are about just you are actually far and few between. You have your birthdays, which as you get older, you try and forget a few of them and just perhaps focus on the milestone birthdays. You have the life events, perhaps another graduation or a wedding or becoming a parent. And these significant days, they're filled with excitement, trepidation, surrounded by love and a celebration of you and your achievements. So a few days then that about you and which makes today very, very special indeed. And I'm incredibly privileged to be part of your day. Let's take a moment to reflect on how you reached today, on the people who have helped you on this journey, your parents, your loved ones, your friends, your lecturers, tutors, the list goes on. And you too have helped others on their journey. It's been a real team effort, a support network that's helped you get through those assignments and exams. Fortunately, that support does not disappear upon your graduation. The friendships made here during your degree will stay with you, as was said earlier. I too met my best friend on the first day of my degree back in 1989 and we became firm friends and 35 years later, we're still best friends. And indeed, I spoke to her just this week also. And on graduation today, you are now part of a new supergroup, the alumni of Warwick. And that really does mean something. It surprised me just how much weight having a degree from Warwick had. The alumni network is also a great way to keep in touch with your peers and it can be a, a way for you to give back through mentorship and with such an interconnected world it is so much easier to achieve this than in my day when we were still writing letters by hand using landlines and the pesky fax machines. So I'd like to highlight the importance of teamwork to you. Teamwork makes the dream work. I'm always saying this, and it is, it is fundamental. It truly is. When you embark on the next step of your career, be that further study, a job, or volunteering, or whatever it may be, you will be part of a team. And they're interesting entities. They have a, a life of their own, a, a microenvironment, and as you go through your, course, um, your career, you'll go on courses all about teams. Um, how you should act in them, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what makes a good team. And the aim is to produce high effective, high performing teams. And I've had the privilege to be um, a member of a number of fantastic teams throughout my career. So I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry now for over 25 years, and I've only ever done regulatory affairs. And for those who don't know, regulatory affairs is how you get drugs approved in the country for sale. So it involves understanding the legislation and the guidances of each of those countries with the intent of developing the drugs so that they are efficacious and safe for patients. When I say that, it sounds terribly dry and boring, but it's absolutely fantastic. I, I, been doing it for 25 years and I'm still doing it and I just love it. It is a real way of using your science in a, in a desk job essentially so you don't have to keep wearing the white coat. And during my career in regulatory I've worked for all sorts of pharmaceutical companies many you will have heard of such as Johnson Johnson, Amgen, GSK, Novartis, all the big ones but also the smaller ones. Um, and I've worked on all sorts of products um, talking to peers earlier, I've, I've really gone from head to toe or from toe to head because I've worked on antifungal foot cream all the way through to, to drugs for um, multiple sclerosis and anti-cancer drugs. 
So currently, I'm working on radio pharmaceuticals, which is a ma it's undergoing a massive growth at the moment. Um, so radio pharmaceuticals, we've heard, uh, we may know about radioactive iodine for treating thyroid cancer. Well, now, um, these clement clever chemist types have worked out how to attach radioisotopes to other molecules and the molecules will perhaps be targeted to a specific cancer and will take along this radioisotope and the isotope will then help to either light up where the cancer may be or if you use a different isotope you can use it to kill the cancer cell directly. It's just opening up a potential new wave of drugs to come through. It is indeed very exciting times. So my time in radio pharmaceuticals began back in 2017 when I joined Blue Earth as head of global regulatory affairs. It was just me and I did just look at my desk and think this is me, we're going to take over the world again. And um, it was just a teeny tiny company, I was the seventh employee. And as the company grew, I was able to take on people to join my team. And uh, there are now six of us in the regulatory team. Just six people, but oh my goodness, we have achieved so much. So drug development it takes time. On average, 10 to 15 years to conduct the clinical studies. And my team and I, we took on a new drug. It was brand new, very shiny. It had been used in Germany um, at the lab bench. And we took it from acquisition through initial studies in humans, the phase one studies, and then into phase three clinical studies during a pandemic, as you do. And we gained US FDA regulatory approval in five years from gaining that molecule into the company, five years versus the 10 to 15 years. This high speed development was against the backdrop of actually keeping an existing product on the market. And we were developing other products at the same time, including a therapeutic molecule. It was incredibly, incredibly busy. So how did we achieve this? We worked blinking hard. And we took the time to celebrate our achievements, as we are today, to celebrate your achievements. And we worked together as a team. And communication is a key for creating an environment that allows us to learn, grow, and develop from each other. So we would talk often and openly within our department. We have weekly catch-ups, we bounce ideas. I think it's called strategy, but it's bouncing ideas. Um, we pressure test those strategies within the team, each voice we listen to, and we have fun. So we are a unit, our department, a unit, and yet every one of us is very different within that team. So my role as leader is to provide the fertile soil to allow each of those individuals to flourish. And that will help them to be active influences in other teams and to be leaders of those teams also, and to be able to look back on their time within the department and know the difference that they made and how they contributed to the success of that team. So as you leave Warwick now as a graduate onto your next endeavor, you will become part of a team and you may become a team leader. Think then on what sort of team you want to be part of, what you can contribute to that team, what sort of, sort of leader you would want to have or indeed to be. And should one of your teams not work as expected, ask yourself why. Learn from that experience. Is there anything you could have done differently? Perhaps said less, listened more, spoken up. Keep your sense of fun and curiosity and keep learning and growing as an individual. You have the agency to change yourself and you can change only yourself. But you can provide the environment in which to encourage others to flourish. So go forth and grow you and your teams. Thank you.